Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Malay Didi. My name is Penyanyi Abdul Rahim Esani, Penyanyi Ismail. Uh, we are parents to five kids. Three of them are on the spectrum of autism disorder. Um, in my free time, I like to be with family and if I could sleep. And for me, I would play games on my PC, go to the gym, maybe go fishing, play rugby. Oh, good lord. <laughs> yeah. So I work with Smarter Brunei. And I work with BIBD. And we're here for the World Autism Awareness Day video. So we're here today to do a little bit of a question and answer. Um, they have prepared some questions in this bowl in front of us. I have no idea what's inside it. So we're going to answer whatever's in the bowl. Can you go get one question? What is the fondest memory you have with your child with autism? Um, fondest memory I have with my child with autism. I have three. We have three. <laughs> um, so, my fondest one, I think, would be, I'll start with Fahmi. He's my eldest. Um, and he started off non-verbal. So my fondest memory of him would be when he finally was able to speak and have meaningful conversation with me. It was when he came back from the UK, remember? And before he went to the UK, he was only saying very simple one word, one word sentences. And then when he came back to the UK, from the UK, he said things like, Oh, Babu, I had a great time. It was really fun. And I started asking him questions. And it was the first meaningful conversation we've had ever since he was diagnosed. So, yeah, that's my fondest memory about yours. Which one? Mm, I would say all the time I spend with them. That's your fondest memory. Yeah, I mean, because I don't see no difference for me. For me, I would say I would I would say that I see them in a different light because all the time that I spend with them would be you know part of my memories and, and it's all good. All three of them, all, all five of them. All five. All five. All five. Yeah, that's it. Right, let's get another question up. In your own words, what is autism? <laughs> you want to start off in your own words? Autism. Mm -hmm. People would say it's a disorder. Yeah. But, like I said, for me, I don't see them in any different way. You just have to know how they focus how they react and basically they're just you know people no different no, they're, 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 they're no difference from me or you or anyone else I would say alright so autism in my way of my own words I would say is autism is a very special way of looking at things they feel differently from you and me, they think differently, and they see things differently, and they have a different way of understanding. Which, if you think about it, is no different from anyone else. Because everyone doesn't think the same, everyone doesn't feel the same, everyone doesn't react the same. So it's a bit much what, he, what my husband said, you know, like, in my own words, autism is just, you gotta know how to understand them, and be open-minded, you know, like, kind of like thinking, What's I think what's the best um, analogy is like what's poison to you is sweet to me and what's sweet to me could be poison to you kind of thing. So it's just a different way of looking at things. Yeah. Right. Your what is your advice for other parents out there? 
Okay, I'm, I'm a veteran parent. <laughs> <laughs> so what would your advice be for new parents? New parents? Well, you know, parents like who don't have what we had. Guidance, in the sense, kind of lost. I always helped with the what to do. Well, I would say I would say one word: acceptance. In a way that um, you cannot say that your kids. This is all any different than anyone else. You don't see them as special, I guess. Because I don't. I don't see them as special as people would say. So the word acceptance is one word that I would say to parents out there. You have to accept. I think he, he wants me to elaborate on this, right? So, <laughs> he's a man of few words. <laughs> so, um, I would say what he's trying to say is, like, I agree with him, is more of like, yes, they are special in their ways, in their own ways. They, you have to accommodate them, but you can't be in denial because if you're in denial, you're not going to help your child's progress. If you know something's wrong, well, not wrong per se, but something's not adding up. Like, there's a progress that's being a bit stuck. So like for us, it was with our number four, Imanina. When she was about a year plus, we noticed something was off and I kind of went, she's got a bit of a delay here and there. And then, you know, as she grew older, we could see the delay progressing. She was having daily meltdowns at one point. Every single day she would cry and outburst. And even though we have two kids before this who have autism, it was more of, we had to act fast. So for us, we just decided, you know, we have to give her intervention as soon as possible. So I think that's what the acceptance is. It's like you can't have much time to process how you feel about it. Because if you're going to take your time to accept it, if you're going to take time to accept it, it might take too much, long, too, too long of a time that to the point that you're delaying your child's potential progress. So our advice is to accept it as soon as possible. Um, see your child as yes they are special but you also have to understand that you must push for progress but also understand anak kita tu cuman that's what i would say lah ha? um is that all pretty much yeah, yeah pretty much yeah. Okay. we have two more questions <laughs> Oh, oh, big question. What would you say are the biggest misconceptions and misunderstandings of autism? <laughs> okay, I'll start off. Um, one of the biggest misconceptions of autism for me is that um, oftentimes people think that kids with autism are naughty. <coughs> Really naughty, gawok, nyorang, um, very inda mo dangar cakap, don't wanna listen. Um, they're just basically what they say is naughty kids who don't want to behave, right? And I think that's the biggest misconception on my part. It's not that they're naughty kids who don't want to behave or don't want to listen. It's that they are trying to express themselves. There's some way their behavior is expressing themselves. It's part of communication. And we have to learn how to communicate with them and also meet halfway. So for example, like Imanina, she kept crying and she kept having daily meltdowns. And we couldn't understand what was she's trying to say. Was she hurt? Was she hungry? Was she sleepy? Was she what what happened to her? Did something bite her? Did she see something? You know, there was all these things. But other parents would see it, or other people would see it as, you know, this kid's just crying all the time. It doesn't want to listen, you know, and stuff like that. Maybe she's spoiled or whatever. So for me, it's more of 
that's the biggest misconception is that it's not that they don't want to listen or they don't want to behave it's that whatever behavior that they're showing that is um lashing out is actually how they're trying to express how they feel especially that they're non-verbal you know like so how they want to communicate how they want to say things yeah exactly. it's just that I would say that they don't know how to express it. Yes. Express as in how to say it. Yes. They just have to express on how they feel. So basically, like in Manila, at one time, she would just you know, cry, nangis, nala, ibagi makan, no, no, bagi minum, no. And then all she just wanted was to mandi. <laughs> Yes, she just wanted to mandi. Yeah. yeah, or she was just really sleepy, yeah. or she just wanted to watch some. So she didn't like what was on the channel, the TV channel. So it's a guessing game for us. It's always a guessing game. We have to always understand. But I think the important part is also for parents not to react. When they're not nangis, don't you know. <laughs> but um, I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions and misunderstandings. Um, it's the same with Hazik. Azik will always kind of scream and shout and it's because there's something wrong and we have to find out what is wrong, what's going on. And with Fahmi, he's always crying. He's 12, but he's always, always crying. Big boy, big baby. Big, big baby. <laughs> but we love him and we try to get him to understand that there's other ways to express himself other than crying. Yeah, So he can just say what is making him upset or he can... Um, express himself in healthier ways um, that is, you know, that he can use his words or even through expression of drawing or whatever it is he likes. So our kids, misconception is that a lot of people think, you know, they're different from other kids, but they're not so much different. For us, they're just like any other kid. It's just that you need to understand the different maze of kids' emotions and behaviors. Oh, that's a nice one to end with. <laughs> what are your hopes for your kids in the future? Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh. We have five. <laughs> we have five. Well, being a parent, of course, you want the best for your kids. You want a good future, the best future for our kids. And I hope for my kids, they can grow well, healthy, and basically they can, uh, what is it? Be conscious. Dampat berdikari. Be independent. Be independent. Okay. Um, so basically, in a way, like, we are getting old. <laughs> we are getting old, okay. <laughs> we are getting old. <laughs> and there would be a time that when we are not here anymore, we would want to pass for kids. So I hope uh, with our kids, they can be independent. I think that's the most important thing. Independent and happy. Um. I said I didn't want to cry in this video. <laughs> um, I want my kids to be independent, yes, for sure. Happy, for sure. I mean, I don't really have, like, they must be something in the future. I just want them to be the best versions of themselves, you know? Um, especially worrying about who's going to take care of them. We weren't supposed to cry. Yeah, no one was <laughs> I wasn't supposed to cry. Okay, um I hope for sure that because they're siblings, that they have a really strong bond with each other and they look after each other. That's that's something I really want. Like as they grow older they don't go further apart, but they actually are really close to each other and they take care of each other no matter how old they get. So 
that's I think <laughs> my hope for my kids, our kids, the future. And um, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to cry. <laughs> okay, so um, now let's just say uh, happy World Autism Awareness Day, everyone. Keep doing what you're doing, and I hope that this brings you a little bit of an eye-opener to what it looks like to have autism in a family. Yeah?